It wasn't, I want to make better choices. It was, well, I don't want to go to hell when I die. And so in my mind, I could still do whatever I wanted, but I had like this ticket to heaven. Like that's how I viewed it at that age. I remember being in a domestic violence shelter, walking around, looking at the state of my life and thinking, my choices got me here. If you only talk to your friends every now and then, you're not really gonna know much about them. Or if you're dating or married and you only, you know, talk to them on Sundays and then that's it, how deep is your relationship right. gonna be? How secure are you gonna feel in that relationship? That's such a but good also word. how much are you gonna even know about that person? Jesus, we come to you so thankful for the opportunity to celebrate what you're doing through my sweet friend Tamara's life today. We ask that you would just glorify yourself and you would pull out of her story what you want to be made known. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. welcome to the Love Story Podcast. We're so excited to be here today with Miss Tamara McMillan. Hi. I love her so much. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you do at Love Church, Tamara. All the things. <laughs> <laughs> um, technically, my title is marketing director, but I also do project management, self-ed 365. That's how a lot of you <laughs> know who I am because She's of that. She's reeling all the cats. Um, so yeah, lots of things within the creative world, um, podcast shoots, on the other side of it and yeah so it's super fun how's it feel to be on this side today you know it's great it's it's a time to be alive <laughs> it's so great. far so good right yeah. we're doing well yep okay so we're gonna kick it off with some basics tell us a little bit about where you grew up what your family life was like and kind of your faith practice or background if you would to yeah. get us started so I grew up military, actually, Whoa. which is, yeah, it's its own little world. And I honestly think that is why until more recently I struggled to like put down roots because I'm so used to moving around here, there and everywhere. Um, but yeah, I grew up military. My mom and my bio dad, they split when I was just before I turned two and then my mom met my stepdad. So that's who actually raised me as my stepdad and haven't seen my bio dad since I was four. And even as we've kind of reconnected over the years, that's this whole issue in and of itself, but grew up military and then my parents split. So my mom and stepdad, they split when I was 10 and we lived in New Jersey at the time. And and I see now it was the Lord, but my mom decided to still move to Nebraska, even though they were already going to head for divorce. And so it was after they divorced that things just kind of started shifting for me as far as, you know, when families break up, you struggle with feeling insecure, feeling like, well, is it my fault this happened? And even though when my parents were together, they would send my brother and I to church on Sunday. So they didn't go. They wanted to have Sunday mornings <laughs> to themselves, but they would send my brother and I to church. And so I was introduced to faith at a young age, even though then I didn't really understand. I just was doing what my parents said. Well, once my parents split, my mom actually became a Christian when I was a teenager and so that was when I was more introduced to it at an older age, mm. understanding what's going on. And prior to that, so we had the divorce and I was sexually abused after my parents split. And so I was a very angry, um, insecure and just kind of wild teenager. So my mom becomes a Christian. And for me, it was like, well, now I can't do this, that, and the other because, oh, well, I'm a Christian now, so now you can't do this. Mm -hmm. So for me, at that age, God was just rules and you can't do this, you can't do that. But the cool thing I see in hindsight is that there were different youth leaders in my life that really just loved me as hard-hearted as I was. They loved me, mm -hmm. and I can look back and see like where the Lord was pursuing me even back then, even though I wasn't. Was that here in Nebraska? Were yeah. you already transferred yeah. over? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then after that, um, 
I did get saved. Yeah, as a teenager. tell us a little bit about meeting Jesus. Yeah, so I remember being at a youth group. I don't know if I should say the church, so I guess I won't. Yeah. yeah. But it was well, okay, it was at Bellevue Christian Center. We used to go <laughs> Just there. Tell us. Yeah. And um I remember I don't remember what their youth ministry is called, but it's interesting we were just there for within reach. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, this is the church I got saved at as a teenager. But I remember it being one of those services, that's what they call it, one of those services where it's like, you never know what could happen when you go outside, you know, you should surrender your life to the Mm -hmm. Lord. And so it was kind of more fear-based for me. Like, it wasn't, I want to make better choices. It was, well, I don't want to go to hell when I die. And so in my mind... I could still do whatever I wanted, but I had like this ticket to heaven. Like that's how I viewed it at that age. And so I would still go to church, go to youth group, even go to like summer Bible camp and all the things my mom had us go to. And I definitely can see where God was pursuing me, but I was really just doing my own thing Mm -hmm. and into drugs and being promiscuous and all those things. And so then it was when I was 19, I became a mom. And so I'm a young mom. And then I had my second and third child at 21 and 23. And then a little bit after that, I get married and it's a abusive relationship. And so I'm supposedly having this relationship with the Lord. And I say it like that just because... I wasn't surrendered. Sure. I still just had it in my mind that God was just this ticket to heaven, but I could just still live my life the way mm. that I wanted to live it. So you were saying earlier that you were you were really looking at it, the difference of behavioral Christianity versus mm-hmm. like a true, genuine surrender and yeah. following yeah. Jesus, right? Yeah. yeah so there was a, a time, I know that there were some life changing and pivotal moments in your life. Mm -hmm. You named a couple of them already, obviously sexual abuse. That's a huge life changing circumstance. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some of the consequences of that being anger. You know, you talked Mm -hmm. about not being able to really know how to process that, but Mm -hmm. tell us, I know there we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that later on here, but tell us a little bit more about any other pivotal things that had happened uh, in your life. So I, Like I said, got married at 25, and then by 27, we were done. Like I said, it was Mm. an abusive relationship, just very unhealthy, mentally, emotionally, physically even. And so when I made the decision to leave, I remember looking at my life, remembering all the sermons I had heard, basically all the seeds the Lord had planted, ultimately. I remember being in a domestic violence shelter, walking around, looking at the state of my life and thinking, my choices got me here. Mm. And so it's so funny. I wasn't at church. I was walking around this living room after she's giving me all the rules of the shelter that we're living in. This is you and your three kiddos? Two, because my son lived with his dad. So he was kind of spared from seeing some of the stuff that the girls saw when they were little. But I remember walking around and then going in my room and saying, okay, Lord, I at this point was about to turn 27 and the age that I got saved was 14. And so I remember saying, I've been doing my own thing for the past 13 Mm -hmm. years. So I'm just going to see what it's like if I follow you wholeheartedly. And then if I don't like it, I'm going to go back to doing my own thing. And I laugh now because that is the silliest thing ever. And I'm sure the Lord was laughing, but I meant it because I mean, I didn't know any different than what I had been doing. And I knew I wanted to try to do things differently, but I didn't know if I would actually like it. But I also knew if I didn't like it, I could just go back to what I was doing before. Mm. How kind is God to (laughs) give you enough seeds to have enough faith to make even that? I love how he he encourages you along the way. Mm -hmm. And you had enough faith to know 
in my own strength, this is not working out. Yeah. So, so, so cool to mm -hmm. see even at that state in your life where you're at rock bottom mm -hmm. in a domestic violence shelter, mm -hmm. being able to see a bigger picture and say, okay, enough of me, Lord. Yeah. I want what you want for my life. So mm -hmm. you saw that as a very pivotal moment mm -hmm. in your whole life. I love it. Tell us a little bit about, okay, so that was the beginning of life change between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the journey from there. Somehow you ended up at Love Church mm -hmm. And you told me a couple of things that you enjoyed about being there and tell us a little bit about how long you were there, kind of what the process was like from that pivotal moment and then forward. Yeah. So from there, I, that was kind of like the moment where it's like, all right, I'm going to start working on my relationship with the Lord. And actually it still though was about behavior because as I said, I felt like my choices and not being obedient to the things that I would hear were the reason that my life was in the state that it was. So then like I would go to church and all of that wasn't in my Bible. So there's that, you know, and we know how important that is, but wait, can we just pause and celebrate what well, we weren't in your Bible, but now you're holding everybody accountable to be <laughs> in yeah, the Bible. I yeah, love it. Yeah. And honestly, it wasn't until I came to love church that that became such an important thing. Mm. But I started going to church and all of that even served in youth ministry, which it's kind of wild to think about serving in youth ministry, but I wasn't like actively reading my Bible, but I started praying more and all of that. And then we divorced. So I'm then in college and just really trying to like reestablish my life and make better choices. And then God in his kindness allowed me to just do that. And, you know, he just took me where I was at. And then I want to say it was about five or six years, maybe six or seven years later that I ended up at Love Church. And in hindsight, I just really see God's kindness in bringing me here because I came here and then that's when it's the whole daily reading, get in your Bible. And I had never been at a church where it was such emphasis on getting your Bible every day. Now I've been at churches that they preach from the Bible, but just the importance of having a reading guide and just, even if it's just starting with the primary reading, mm. which is sometimes shorter. Um, so I started establishing those habits for almost two years and then the next pivotal moment in my walk with the Lord was when the girl's dad, which is my ex-husband, was killed. Mm. And so I had rededicated my life to the Lord. And then fast forward, now I'm in my Bible, I'm journaling, and I'm spending more time building my relationship with the Lord. And then we have this tragedy happen to our family where their dad is dead. They're at that time, they were 11 and a, or 13 and about to be 11. And so they're in middle school, which is a crazy time anyway. And then they're having this tragedy. And so then I'm having to parent grieving children, but also processing my own grief. And it was at that point in my relationship that I just realized the importance of the relationship side of mm -hmm. my relationship with the Lord. It wasn't about rules and behavior modification, but more so just the Lord continuing to invite me into honestly deeper freedom and healing yeah. and all of that. Um, and so then it was during that time that I started digging deeper, like, okay, I've learned all of this stuff and now we're in this tragedy and I had never been in a tragedy like that before. So now what? And so, you know, I did things like fresh start and even grief counseling and all these things. But in the midst of all that, it was staying plugged into community and learning to be more vulnerable mm -hmm. with people around me and not feel like I had to be strong and have it all together. Mm. And it's kind of like, there was just, as I said, just such emphasis on relationships. Yeah. So when you think about what a relationship is and like you're married, but even if you just have friends, if you only talk to your friends every now and then, 
you're not really going to know much about them. Or if you're dating or married and you only, you know, talk to them on Sundays and then that's it. How deep is your relationship right. going to be? How secure are you going to feel in that relationship? That's such a but good also word. how much are you going to even know about that person? And so it was during that time when I kind of had to cling to the Lord yeah. because I knew the ways that I would cope with things in the past and I didn't want to go back to, you know, drugs, alcohol, being promiscuous to kind of escape, you know? And so I had to figure out what it looked like and the vulnerability. That's the thing. It's like, so good. you know, when I'm frustrated, I can tell the Lord that he Mm -hmm. knows anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he's not like, Oh my gosh, she's frustrated. He's like, Oh yay. She's finally trusting me with, what she's feeling. And so that's one of the things that I really learned is just, I can go to God with everything. He already knows anyway, Yeah. but he's just waiting for me to invite him into it. And then on the other side of that has been just so much freedom and healing. But then also, then when I go through the next trial, because that's how life is, there's always going to be something, Something. (laughs) maybe not that extreme, but it could be. Then I'm like, okay, I remember last time this happened and no, I don't like this, but it's that whole where everything works together for our good. Even if not everything is good, I'm not going to say that was a good situation, but what I will say, and even my daughters have said this, is that that is something in all of our lives that really strengthened our relationship with the Lord because we had to cling Mm -hmm. to him. Like. Yeah. There was nowhere else to go for us. It's cool, too, because, I mean, I know you've heard it said, like, you, you usually don't look up until you're on your back, yep. right? Like, you've heard that said. And it's so true for so many. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Like, so many of us could have heard that, but yet there we are still mm-hmm. having to be there yep. in order to receive him. It's cool, too, for you. You're on this side of all of those things. You've identified so many different things things that you've had to learn to hand to the Lord. Now, Mm -hmm. while you were going through it as a young kid, the sexual abuse, the divorce, maybe you didn't know how then, right? right? Because you weren't in relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But what I hear you saying is as you've begun to know the Lord Mm -hmm. through getting in his word daily, you began to love him. Mm -hmm. And then as you begin to love someone, you begin to trust him with your life. And then as you begin to trust him, it's really cool because now you're willing Mm -hmm. to go back with whatever's next. So that's what I hear you saying. And then eventually you can't wait to go tell other people about yeah. it. Right. That's the coolest part. Um, a little bit, tell us a little bit on, okay. You talked briefly, but you didn't get into the details of how you, I want to call it process the issues of your heart. Right. Mm-hmm. There are some things that I feel like, you know, on this side of all of those circumstances, you've probably had to journey with the Lord more than one occasion, yep. right. Through some of this stuff. Give me a highlight or two. Cause you, you, Briefly hit on the word freedom. I don't want to, I don't want to like <laughs> steal the year thunder, but give me a highlight or two of being willing to be vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, now let's just say someone's out there that ju- they don't know. They just simply mm-hmm. haven't walked vulnerably with the Lord or they, nobody really walked through with them how to process mm-hmm. issues of their heart. Give us one or two words that they can grab onto for hope and just tell us what the Lord has done in unlocking some of those things. Like, what are some words that you would say on this side of those? Maybe for each of the situations that you have taken to the Lord, give us a word or two. Mm -hmm. I'd say one is acceptance. And I say that in the sense of accepting this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. I think what I used to do is try to deny how I feel and try to rationalize it like, oh, well, this happened because of this, so it's fine, and deny the fact that I was sad or offended or felt rejected or whatever. So there's acceptance of whatever I'm feeling. But first of all, just identifying what I'm feeling. yeah. Because I learned that anger, a lot of times people will say, I'm angry. And what I learned once is that anger is actually a masking emotion. So You're angry because you feel rejected, you feel neglected, you were disappointed or whatever. So taking that time to sit with my feelings and, or I should say yours, I encourage you, sit with your feelings, figure out what you're actually feeling, accept it, and then give it to the Lord. Now, what that looks like is, as I said, everything that we go through isn't good, But that doesn't mean that God isn't good just because we go through Mm -hmm. bad things. And also remembering that 
what I go through is not a reflection how he about how he feels about it's good. a reflex a blah. <laughs> what I go through is not a reflection of what he feels about That's me. Right. So just because something bad happens to me doesn't mean that God loves me any less. We live in a fallen world, so bad things are just gonna happen. But it's still trusting that God is good in that. And the thing about it is God does work all things together Mm -hmm. for our good. So there's that. But then there's also the side of, I think about the sexual abuse. I think about even the issues with my bio dad and just that rejection and neglect there. I've had to process that over and over Mm -hmm. and over. I might even have processed it last week, if I'm honest, just because there's always more. There's and always two. You were done with that when you were four, yeah. quote unquote done. Yeah. 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 And I will be 44 this year. Actually, the day and your birthday's ep- in June if you want yeah. to celebrate her. Actually, this <laughs> drops on my birthday, which is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be 44 by the time y'all hear this. And I just had to process last week how I felt rejected and mm. neglected. But it's that continuing to yeah. go to the Lord. It's not... Well, I already processed it. Y'all, I've done Fresh Start many a times over the years. Like anytime it comes up, So do you get mad when people say I already (laughs) No. 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 Good. We're all in process. Because there's always more. And Pastor Steve used to always say that. There's always Mm -hmm. more with the Lord. But if you think about it, while we're on earth, there's always more. Like if we were done, then we would be with Jesus. So while we're here, there's always more goodness too. So not just pain to process, but when things come back up, go back to the Lord and lean in and don't feel like, oh my gosh, here we go again. He's probably tired of hearing about this. No, he's inviting us into more freedom, more healing, And just more intimacy with him, because at the end of the day, what I can say about all the things that I've gone through is that I feel so close to him Mm. during those times. And it does say that he's close to the brokenhearted. Mm. So like, I'm sure I could have gone without going through those things, but I'm just so grateful that I always even like tangibly feel his presence at time or just through people and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he's so, always present. His, there's a difference between, we actually just read a devil on this today. Like there's a difference between his presence through creation and the things and people yep. around you versus his manifest presence when he's bringing something special, like a mm-hmm. healing yep. or maybe he's comforting you during loss, mm-hmm. you know, or even just how do I minister to my kids through this? And he brings yeah. wisdom. Yeah, that manifest presence is so tangible mm-hmm. at times. Mm-hmm. Okay, tell me, there's a couple more questions I'd like to ask you. One, I'm going to talk to you about your verse in, in just a minute. But you mentioned, because I was like, okay, what's a highlight, you know, working with the team or whatever. You mentioned part of why you enjoy Mm -hmm. working a little bit with people. And you said people always be people. And we were talking about how many people (laughs) you're always around. Tell me a little bit about what God has drawn out of you or taught you Mm. why that. You kind of hit on it a little bit when you're talking about your relationship with him. But tell me a little bit more about what you enjoy in the way of working here or. Yeah. What and, you said is important. And for those of us or that y'all that listen that go to Love Church, you hear the term surrounded a lot. It's one of our core values to be surrounded. And it's so interesting because prior to honestly working on the team, because there was four years where the pandemic, I worked from home and then I went into a career where I worked very autonomous, was barely around people. I'm also not an extrovert, so then there's that. I love people, but... Now you're a forced extrovert. Yeah, I'm not refreshed (laughs) by being around people like extroverts are. And then the Lord invites me into being in full-time ministry, right? And so I'm always around people, not just the staff, although that is a lot of people, but there's also all the people that go to our church and all the events and even the people that I may not see at church, but they go to the same gym as me or just different things like that. And with that though, it has been so beautiful, just the importance of being surrounded because I think about practical things that I've gone through, like moving where I didn't have to worry about who was going to help me move because people on the team helped or There was a point when my car broke down or no, well, that too, but also then I didn't have a car. I didn't have to worry about how I was going to get to work or even to the gym because there are people that I'm 
constantly surrounded with that are going the same places that I go. But then there's also just getting to celebrate with people, getting Mm. to laugh with people. Like I love the people that I work with. And it's so cool because it's very rare that you start a job like I was able to, where I already had over 10 years of relational equity. A lot of times you start a new job and you may know a couple people, but you probably, unless your like best friend works there, you probably don't have like really deep relationships with them. But God in his kindness, because he knew that in this role, I would need to be more vulnerable. And that's one of the things that has been an area of growth for me. And I just see the beauty in it where I didn't before. But in order for me to be able to do that, I, him knowing me, Mm because of course he knows me, I needed to be around people that I already had relationship with. And so in his kindness, he's like, all right, well, you've been here for 10 years, so you can't act like you don't know these people. And remember this, that, and the other, and just all the memories and stuff like that. And even the ways that people have poured into my kids over the years. And Mm -hmm. so with that, I've just really appreciated just the community. And then also just the ways that I'm challenged and held accountable to things that I, that are important to me, even like working out. We have even a staff when you don't workout, want it to be. right? Even when I don't like, I didn't <laughs> want to do the workout today, but I get to. And so I did it, but then it also encourages me throughout the rest of the week because yeah. the gym that I go to, there are people from our church that go there. I mean, the owner, you know, and so it's kind of like getting to just see people like really be in community with the people that I work with, go to church with. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's so cool. And it's just, it makes me feel, whereas earlier I said, growing up military, I struggled to put down roots because Mm -hmm. we moved around so much. So friendships would fade away, not because of fallings out, but just seasons of life. And I was never offended by it because I was so used to it. Well, now I've grown attached to people and that's it. That's actually scary. I've actually (laughs) talked to the Lord about how there are friendships that I have now that I'm really attached to them, but it's important to have that though. Life is just so much better when you have people that you are doing life with. Yes. Better together. I love it. Well, there's a couple more questions. One is, tell me a little bit about what you feel like. You've just celebrated a lot. So I feel like you're celebrating community. But tell us another thing you're really grateful for, either in this season, it sounds like community, but then also generally speaking, mm-hmm. in the course of your life, the journey that you've been on with the Lord, what's mm-hmm. something you're like, I'm praising God for this? Yeah, for sure, community, because that's kind of new. But I would say even just God's intentionality, mm. just how I can look back over my life and see, yeah, my parents may have sent us to church because they wanted Sundays to themselves, but I really look at it as, try not to cry, from a young age, the Lord was pursuing me. Mm -hmm. And then I just think about when I was a wounded teenager who had been in a broken home and who had been sexually abused and was just kind of wilding out to not feel that pain. The Lord had youth leaders in my life. And there's one woman in particular, Miss Trish, I'm still in a relationship with. And I didn't really care about any of the other youth leaders, but I just had such a soft spot for her. And the Lord really used her in my life to just show me his love. I mean, even practically, she'd do my hair. I was cool with her kids. So she'd let me come like stay at her house for the weekend or whatever. And so that was just him intentionally pursuing me. And then I see where just different relationships and even the fact that I'm on staff here now, but it didn't start here. Like I'm not new to here. And it was just this, it wasn't this thing where I always wanted to do this. It was just me continuing to follow the Lord's leading but I see the ways that he prepared me and the talents and skills that I have to be able to do what I do in my role. So cool. That, you know, there's the marketing side, there's the project management side, and then there's stuff related to content. So sometimes I'm editing the self fed 365 videos. That's actually kind of random, but I just know how to do that. And so I just see 
the Lord's intentionality of preparing me yes. for what he was inviting me into. And even just his intentionality with um, relationships that are being built and just all of that. And I'm just appreciative of seeing mm. that nothing is random and he's very mindful of me and all of us, honestly, but we're talking about me right now. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. I kind of feel like, you know, every book that was written in the New Testament, kind of Paul had 13 letters. And mm -hmm. it's like the letter to the Romans and it's Paul too, yeah. or Timothy too. And it's whoever to the the audience. And I feel like if this is a letter from Tamara mm -hmm. to the audience, like what would be one thing you would want them to know about who God is? I heard you just say, say he's intentional. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's like, you know, through the course of my life, I learned these three names of God or mm -hmm. this characteristic or trait about God. And from Tamara to you all, I just pray that you would hear this about who he is. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is, I'll try to be brief. <laughs> Sorry for throwing you. For, no, no, that's okay. Just give us a few words because we got yeah. a couple minutes here. So God is my peace. Mm. So that is for sure. And I'd say provider. Mm. And, and it's not just provider of financial stuff. It's even provider of anything. So provider of peace, provider of relationship, provider of fun, even provider of joy, laughter, just, um, but so good. also my peace, just because peace is, it's important in this world. And there are so many things that try to take away our peace, but they didn't give us peace. So they really can't take away what they didn't give us. So right. yeah, I'd say that. So fun to, I love like the, the Bible according to Tamara or you're, <laughs> I mean, the Bible tells us that you're an epistle, which is a letter, mm -hmm. right? You're called to declare who God is to other people. So mm -hmm. keep those in your back pocket and keep encouraging people. <laughs> uh, there's a verse I asked you earlier. There's yep. a verse that, you know, maybe if you were to kind of look at your life and go, this is what I feel like really sticks out to me. Mm -hmm. This verse really hits home. Which one did you decide to pick? Yep. So Psalm 37, 4, which is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires mm. of your heart. And it's interesting how when you read the Bible, it's never, what do they say? It's inexhaustible, the revelation that you get. So we go through the Bible a lot with the daily reading. And so I've read different chapters and verses over and over again. And I love that every time there's new meaning. So when I first took on that verse, it was like, ooh, if I delight myself in the Lord, he's going to give me the desires of my heart. And I thought it was like, I get what I want. That's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it goes. Genie in a bottle. Yeah, <laughs> silly me. But it's so cool how as I delight myself in him, get to know him, his character, and even just learn who I am based on who he says mm. I am, he gives me, so he places his desires in my heart. And me being on staff is just such a picture of, no, when I came to Love Church, the goal wasn't beyond, it just wasn't a thought like that. It was just like, oh, Lord, this is the church you're inviting me into. But as I've continued to delight myself in him, and as I've continued to just follow his leading, then he shifted my desires to where then it was like, mm. man, I would love to be able, I was serving on the creative creative team at that time. And I remember just having this thought, I want to say it was last summer, like I would love to be able to do this full time. And that was so random because that was not a thought prior to that. God's like, I put that there. Yeah. <laughs> and then just conversations that happened after that, like, oh, okay, that was you, Lord. And then now here I am. But that's because I've delighted myself in him to I be able it. to embrace what he invited me into. I love it. It's so good. So, so that verse is just, I love how you broke it down because mm -hmm. so many times we misconstrue it and mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's so good. Um, you highlighted, you know, how, when you were self-fed, you really learned about relationship. Mm -hmm. Like when you learned about self-feeding and truly genuinely what it was about, not rules, not relation, not rules, but relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you talked about that a little bit. You also, I mean, you, you hit on briefly, but I feel like we should end on this note. You hit on how, you know, God brought you through as you began to process some issues of your heart. I feel like 
there's a couple things, you know, maybe there's people out there who have had some sexual abuse who have gone through a divorce or maybe their parents got divorced. Um, how would you challenge? How would you encourage? What would you say to the listening mm. audience that might be finding, you know, they, they're mm. in it. They're, they might yeah. find themselves there right now. How would you encourage them to run to or what would you say to encourage mm. them to just want to? To think, want to want to. Yeah. I think one of the first things I would say is to not embrace shame, mm. be it what you went through. So if you're sexually abused or your parents went through a divorce, but even if you, like myself, you divorced or whatever you've done, don't take on shame. Like get in your word, find out what the Lord says about who you are. You're a new creature in Christ. Yes. You are forgiven all these things. So receive that, but then also because we're human and we've been through whatever, you may have been through more extreme things, it's still true you need to continue to process the issues of your heart mm -hmm. as they come up. Continue to, as things bubble up, look at it as an invitation from the Lord to be freer, to be more healed, to be able to experience more yes. love because a lot of times we can't receive not only just his love, but love from other people because our hearts are so hardened because yes. of what we've gone through. And God doesn't want that for us, Amen. that he wouldn't want us in community if it was going to be all yeah. blah and, you know, messy. And so just continue to go to him, continue to trust that not only you can go to him, but that he wants you. He desires that you bring all of that junk to him because it was never his desire for you to go through mm -hmm. that and then just let him heal you. Mm -hmm. And me now, and she's known me <laughs> for, a, I was not this way before. I wasn't this just joy filled and was very closed off and I'd show up, but just, yeah. And that's just because that's of, your word, just keep showing up. Yeah. I would keep showing up, but it was, it's really interesting, but I was still very closed off, but it wasn't until I started focusing on healing that then I could be in an environment with loving people and actually not only appreciate it, but like desire receive, yeah. it and receive it. Amen. So yeah, just keep showing up and keep Amen. leaning in. It's so good on this side of it to hear just how gracefully you talk about some very difficult moments. And I know that they weren't easy for you, whether mm -hmm. it was when you're in it or even when you began to just pop the lid or, you know, lift the hood mm -hmm. on some of those things. I know it wasn't easy for you at first, but to see you on this side of that for me is mm -hmm. such a joy. And I know um, I love in third John, it talks about how the father rejoices seeing his kids walk in the truth while mm -hmm. I'm rejoicing mm -hmm. right along with your Abba father, Tamara, and watching you become more and more and more mm -hmm. free. Thank you so much for being willing to share your story, to declare who God is. And hopefully today somebody is encouraged that God's never done with us mm. and that they would be willing to take a step of faith and just say, yes, I want more of what you have for me, God. Amen. Amen. Would you pray for anybody listening on Por Favor? Yes. Lord, I just pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you would reveal mm, yourself yes, to them Lord. more and more, Lord, that you would allow them to just see how you've been pursuing them, Lord, that they would go deeper in relationship with you, deeper in intimacy mm -hmm. with you, and that if there are things that they are struggling with as far as needing healing, that they would release that to you so that they can just experience freedom, Lord, and that they would just truly taste and see that you are good. Mm -hmm. um, keep a hedge of protection around them and provide the things that they need. And I pray all this in Jesus name. Amen, amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Love Church Story Podcast. Love y'all. See you next time.